Uh, I'll comment about later, but um, I'm informed by reliable sources, and it always happens after I'm when I'm not awake. That we have we have some of you in the group that think you're tough guys, and um, that's all I'll say for the um, YouTube. But um, the last tough guys here left in an ambulance, and I put him in the ambulance. So. Um, but we'll discuss it when we're not on TV. Okay, now, um, I told you the story about the doctor that fell off the snooker table, didn't I? Yeah, just for the YouTube. I normally don't talk about this on YouTube, but to give you a little um, spice for life. Um, we had a Harvard-educated doctor here many years ago, and I was, um, Taking a shower, getting ready for the graduation, like we're tonight, you know, celebration, and and uh, the um, our housekeeper's pounding on the door, like I told you guys. Anyway, I come out. What's wrong? We have a problem. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. What is it? Uh, somebody fell off the snooker table and broke their leg, and blah, blah, blah. and uh, there's a doctor, and blah, 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 and and one of the kids that was um, at the seminar was a carpenter, so he made a splint. But as I told the group here, and I'm going to tell YouTube. The reason he, he fell off, uh, or not maybe the reason, in excitement of him masturbating on the snooker table, he fell off and broke his leg. But whatever happens here at the castle stays at the castle, so the names uh, will protect uh, the innocent. And the, and, the, and the medical person from Harvard is still practicing medicine in New York State. Um, but I don't expect that's going to happen tonight. In fact, it better not happen tonight. Um, now, the last question, I answered the accountants, we went to the lawyers, we got the international law firm, right? I answered that, and now uh, from there, so we've got, we had two accountants, as somebody uh, aptly pointed out, we had ENY and BDO, and I said that was okay, and as long as you ask them to uh, use their name on, the, um, on your executive summary, by the way, some will and some won't. Um, they, if they have confidence in you, they'll, they'll say, yeah. And now we have the, uh, 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 the law firm, and uh, we'll be able to um, most likely use their name. So when you send the executive summary now to a financial institution and or an acquisition candidate, you look stronger than mule's breath, as they say. Does everybody understand stronger than mule's breath? Bill? No, I didn't think so. Okay. The horses and mules have bad breath. A donkey, uh, 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 camel's breath, I should say. Stronger than camel's breath. And camels have extremely bad breath, the odor. Well, now your executive summary with the uh, chairman, your uh, dream team, your accountants and your lawyers, you look stronger than uh, camel's breath. I mean, you're strong. You look like twisted steel and panther piss. Well, I'm not going to explain it to you. I'll explain it to you later. You're, I mean, you look good. Okay, so now when you're going to the financial institutions, uh, you continue to warm them up, and now you're uh, looking for acquisition candidates. And in this drill, we were um, uh, looking at uh, dental roll-ups, right? Dentists, uh, indep independent dentists. Now, some countries, some states have different rules. Some countries, you have to have at least 50% of the board represented by dentists. Okay, not ownership. Don't confuse that. Board representation by dentists. Some states, you have to have uh, board uh, ownership. And so you set up a special uh, uh, LLC with a dentist in it to own um, 50%. But you don't want to be able to th be thrown out by them. So you set up a special LLC. So now we're going and we're uh, going after independent dentists. Remember, dentist practices, dental, uh, his dental practice 20, 30, 40 years. Sometimes even longer, they have no exit. You're doing them a favor by coming and uh, uh, offering to acquire. Some dentists have three chair dentists. Now, one dentist normally has two or three chairs, and he goes from chair to chair to chair. Some dental practices will have three, four, five dentists. But 95% of the time, the dental dentists, and we have kids that never came to the seminar that are out there on YouTube that are rolling up dental practices as we speak, as we speak. Um, and you, um, same thing. You look on LinkedIn, you look on the dental associations, you look at some of the people that remember the, on your board, the former president of the American Dental Association, and uh, you start to look for uh, candidates to purchase. 
Uh, and you already know in the back of your head, there are financial institutions around the world that are willing to lend on purchasing dental practices because dentists are considered extremely good credits, much better than regular doctors. I don't know why, I'm just telling you that's, those are the facts. So you build up a sale funnel like you do, you, you get uh, 60, 80, 100 of these dentists, and you, and you start going after them one at a time um, and, uh, the, um, and offering them the deal that they can't refuse. You're going to give them a, uh, a, a, a deal that's based on the two to five times EBITDA that we've already discussed with the banks, that is, and dentists more or less know that. Some dentists will own the property. Those are easier to finance because it's a real estate transaction. They'll look at it as a real estate transaction. Some won't. Most of the dentists are going to want to keep the property and only sell the practice because they can keep the property and that's going to be part of their retirement fund because they're going to lease or rent the property to you. You don't want that. You want the property. Uh, and sometimes you have to come back to the dentist and say, we can't finance that. We're going to have to buy the, the uh, property as well. Um, now, the, contrary to what you would think, even though a lot of people are watching this on YouTube, and I've been saying this for almost 24 years, there are not very many people trying to buy dentist practices. I don't know the answer why. Basically, QLA uh, assassins are the only ones out there doing this. They're doing this. Okay, so now um, you've, uh, you've bought 5, 10, 20, 30, 40. And you know, because you've done your homework, there's been two major exits for dental practices, both about, one about 10, 7, 8 years ago, one about 15 years ago, uh, both coincidentally on the uh, East Coast, and they were sold to Canadian uh, pension funds um, for big money, uh, one in the hundreds of millions and one uh, over a billion dollars. Um, and these people, whether it's a dental practice or it's a hair salon or whoever you're buying to uh, consolidate, will have no exit. They have no exit. Very seldom, as we've talked about, where the children of the owners of these businesses want to take over the business. And especially now with millennials, they, just, they tell the parents to fuck off. Uh, and uh, you roll these up, and over three, four, five years, and you'll exit, and you'll do it again in something else. Uh, uh, maybe hair salons, and you'll do it again um, in something else. And the young kids in this room, and the young kids watching on YouTube can do this four, five, six times in a career, in a lifetime. And remember, net worth is built over a series of transactions, not one deal. So for the kids that are in their uh, teens and early 20s, mid 20s, you can easily do it five, six, seven times. And uh, over a, a 30, 40 year career, if you decide to work that long and create what we've been talking about for the whole week, generational wealth. And it's the only system I know, and I've been looking a long, long time, the only system I know uh, that uh, you can start with no money. And many, many people email me all the time, how do I take $1,000 and turn it into a half a billion, or like I did, and this is the only game in town. This is the only game in town, and to the best of my knowledge, Still nobody's teaching it. And all the information, kids, is on YouTube. Is, it's for free. Uh, what you guys get are templates and things that I've already told you about. Uh, so you have a, an edge on the, um, uh, the, uh, the melon heads that are just watching this on YouTube. Um, and, um, and, 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 and you do it. Bless you. Uh, now, we've taken it from the first presentation of the chairman, which we call the anchor chairman, because it's like an anchor tenant, but you don't call him an anchor tenant or anchor chairman. I mean, he's the chairman, and he's a distinguished person, uh, a man or woman in his field, uh, down through the, um, the exit. Now, you can do this if you're really on point in three years. If you meander and you turn it into a journey instead of a process, uh, it'll take you six or seven years. Um, but at the end, either at three years or at six or seven years, you, you're uh, capable of exiting your portion in the hundreds of millions. You heard what Josh said. He plans on exiting in, uh, in three years with a couple hundred million. You heard what Frank said. All these, I mean, now where else are you going to turn something into a few hundred million dollars other than robbing banks or securities fraud or some of the neat uh, illegal shit that they're doing online now? There is no, there's no possibility. Okay, did I answer your question now? Okay, any other questions on that process? 
before we go uh, through some of the financial follies that you'll, uh, uh, you have, everybody in this room will, will find at least a couple of them, and a couple of the guys I've been teasing more, uh, like we are, are Bangladeshi, uh, I'm sure he'll find a financial folly the first week he's out. Yeah, I knew you'd have a question. What is it? <laughs> What's the best way to read subjectives of injustice in the field that you're in? Please ask again. What's the best way to read subjectives? Is it just to Google which kind of, like, all the big companies? Oh, no. You mean, are you going to exit by a public offering or are you going to exit by industry uh, sale? The best way you let the market tell you. I mean, if, if the Dow Jones is at 40,000 in America and the FTSE 500 and all the other indices are... Uh, uh, setting uh, um, highs, it's a pretty, it's a no-brainer. I mean, you could exit to a public offering, um, and there's no, and I mean, there's a stock exchange around uh, Beijing, Shanghai, Singapore, in Australia, uh, in Germany, uh, here in the UK and the Netherlands. There's plenty of stock exchanges. Now, occasionally, even in a roaring market, um, an industry giant um, will be trying to add to their portfolio. And as long as they're paying more than the multiples you can get on a, on a stock exchange, then fine, sell it to an industry giant. But normally, the highest multiples, remember you're buying at three to five times EBITDA, and the stock markets are normally exiting at between 10 and 20 times EBITDA. That's a big spread. Uh, is because you're giving them liquidity on a, a, a 500 dental practices Independently owned, there's no liquidity. 500 dental practices rolled into one big uh, corporate entity has liquidity on a stock exchange because you, you, the, the guy can call his broker, I want 500 shares of that, I want to sell 1,000 shares of that. And for that privilege of having liquidity, they pay up big multiples, huge multiples. Once in a while, industry giants will pay up multiples because for some strategic reason, their board is convinced um, themselves they should pay up. Uh, but normally, the biggest multiples or the biggest spread for you, the biggest arbitrage t will be obtained by um, uh, public offering. And most countries have more than one stock exchange. Excuse me. Here in the UK, they have two major stock exchanges. They have a London stock exchange, which is the major indice. It's equivalent to the New York. Uh, and they also have AIM, um, which is the secondary uh, market the secondary market, and um, and there's a tertiary market as well, here of which I forget what the name of it is, um, but AIM was developed 25 years ago for um, small, medium-sized enterprises. It was basically patterned for QLA, okay? So about the same time I started coaching QLA, the AIM stock exchange came to be, and so we've had uh, a number of kids uh, some of which are up there in the Hall of uh, Fame, um, exit. Now, when I say exit, uh, a couple of the YouTubers asked some questions that were uh, actually germane. Uh, they said, when you say exit, you're not getting rid of 100% of your holdings. So let's just say that you've done all this and you've built up a company and you're going to float it uh, on, on a stock exchange. You're going to take it public and it has a market cap. Let's make it simple, small numbers a market cap of 100 million, okay? And after all this stuff, you still can very well have 50%. But let's say you got diluted and you're down to 25%. So 25% of that 100 million will be shares that are in your name or in your trust name or your family's name or whoever. So let's just say 25, 25 million uh, is in your names. Your directors, your chairman, and all these people, assuming that you keep the same people, which probably won't, but let's say, so then that means your chairman who has 10% will have 10 million, and the guy, the industry expert down to 2%, he'll have, he'll have uh, 2 million. So we're keeping it in even numbers. So um, the uh, board may still have 40% of the company with, when you count yourself and all the directors together. The sh you're selling in the, the shares. The public will buy the shares. So, that, so now, let's say that you uh, take it public for, um, you only sell 20% of the company and you take it public. So the market, the stock that has a market that it's open to the public is only 20%. You, 80% is still closely held 
by uh, you guys or institutions. And um, so you're not gonna be able to get out 100%. You won't be able to sell 100% of your stock. So, but you, what, well, now you'll have uh, liquid uh, uh, shares like uh, Bill Gates sell shares uh, every quarter for tax purposes or for estate planning. So you'll, you'll have fungible currency. Uh, you'll have something that you can buy things with and leverage things with, as we've learned, and hypothecate things against uh, in the shares. But you're not going to be able to get 100%. Over time, you'll be able to get out 100%. But there's no reason why you can still be the CEO. There's no reason why the board members can still be there. Some of you will exit completely. And uh, even though you're not with the organization anymore, you'll still have a big chunk of equity. Uh, in it, and you'll and once you leave the organization, there's no time commitment. You can sell the shares whenever you want. When you stay with the company, uh, it's called stiff stock, and in America, it's called 144 stock, and you'll only be able to sell parts of it uh, uh, subject to the Security Exchange Commission. Okay, YouTube, we'll talk to you tonight.